Hi, so it's question time again. Um, I've got a pile of your questions and I am still going through them. As a reminder, if you want to send any questions to inspire at forthelandlords.com, um, don't send any correspondence to the business there, as in you, know, you need a response. Um, you know, I've got maybe two or three hundred, I'm just sort of piling them up. But there's one question that um, it keeps getting asked quite a lot, but it's not the most common question. But I've chosen to sort of bring it forward a bit because there are some of you out there looking for houses, and so great. You're, you're, you're doing it, you're so close, um, but you're struggling to find them. So the question I get asked in various different ways is, um, I, I can't find the houses. Um, you know, either the right house or where to look. Um, so it's a really important question. If, if we can get this answered, then maybe some of you will go on and be able to find the right house and actually do it. So um, it's not the most common question, but I think it's one that can really make a difference when we get the answer. So, um, I think really simply it's, it's three things, not looking for the right house, not looking on the right street, or maybe not even looking in the right town or city. So, so those three things. I think strange as well, some of the things that um, you're looking for are actually the things that are holding you back. Uh, and that might be a, a strange sort of thing to, uh, but it's quite, quite a common thing. And um, we meet with people regularly that uh, are trying to find new areas to open and in, in our own business we try and find new areas to open and it's a common set of questions you get asked and where you'd naturally go isn't always the right place in fact rarely, rarely is it the right place so let's um let's let's go on to this i'll tell you what else i thought of as well um let's start a deal clinic let's do that so if anybody is really close they've got a house they've viewed it and they want the benefit of my opinion, I'll even send it out to the team and say, what else, what else do you think, guys? Send it in to inspire at forthelandlords.com. Send, uh, what do we need? We need the purchase price, how much you think the renovation will be, what the end value will be, and what you think it will rent out for. And maybe a brief description of what the property, the area, um, and maybe some pictures. We'll go through it, and um, well, I'll give you the benefit of our, my opinion. Don't get disappointed if I don't, you know, if I, get, if I get hundreds of them, I'll stick them all together and I'll, maybe I'll talk about one or two in, in a, a week sort of thing. But, um, you know, it'd be better better than that than nothing and hearing about other people's experiences. So it, it, it isn't uh, going to be, I'm not going to be able to get to everybody, as, as you can probably appreciate. So, um, okay, so, so the right house, what is the right house? I think everybody's heard, I think, um, you, you want to be buying the worst house on the best street. Um, or the worst house on the street. Let's, let's take the word best street out of there, so that's probably going to be a bit of red herring. So the worst house on the street, um, because you're looking to add value and then you know what it's going to be worth. So if, if everything on the street's worth £100,000, but you're managing to buy something that's a bit of a wreck, a bit, bit smelly, and it's £60,000, um, then you can bring it up and you'll be pretty sure that it's going to be worth £100,000. The key bit here, and it never, you've got to remember it, is you're buying the worst house on the street, but at the right price. You could absolutely look at the worst house and buy it for the wrong price and it, it, it wouldn't matter what you bought, it would always be wrong. So, however, having said that, it's true. The worst house is gonna be the, the house the way you can add the most value as long as you pay the right price. So all the things that are putting you off, and I've, I've had these conversations with people, yes, but I, you know, they should be the things that are drawing you in. So it's got cracks in the walls, it's got Japanese knotweed, it's got a problem with, um, you know, it needs too much work, it's got a really bad damp problem. I can already feel you through the camera, some of you going, oh my God, I don't want to be dealing with any of these things. Um, every single one of those things, every you think if you don't want to be doing it, you're sort of recoiling away from this property, it's reducing your competition. Now, it's a dangerous thing to go towards that if you don't know how to fix it, of course. You must only tackle something that you feel confident to be able to fix, you want to go in there. You're going through a viewing and you're picking about a thousand pound problem here and a two thousand pound problem there and a three thousand pound problem there. That's only a benefit to you if those ten thousand pounds worth of problems, one, you're confident you can fix them and you're confident you can fix them for less than ten thousand pounds so you can actually make some margin out of it as well. So don't just blindly go walking towards them but definitely think of the, t the, the, the properties that you're looking at, you know, shutters on the um, on the windows, uh, the kind of things that are really going to put people off, and maybe they're putting you off. Maybe walk towards them a little bit closer, have a look, see if you can fix them. So that that's number number one. Um, next, I think people are looking on the wrong streets. 
Um, I think the simple fact is, and it's, it's, it's a, I've seen it time and time again, and um, people people know that they don't have to, uh, shouldn't be buying a house to rent out that looks like the kind of house that they live in. Um, but I think common mistake is that landlords buy a house that's too expensive. Um, to let's put it in verse, verse to comment a nicer area, which we'll come on to that in, in, in a moment. So um, I think it's one of the most common mistakes. This will slow your growth down a lot because there are places where you can buy a house for twice as much as, you know, house B is twice as much as house A, but the rent is virtually identical. So you can effectively buy twice as many houses and get the, to, to get the, 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 uh, the twice as good yield. Yeah. Um, Simply put, you 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 can you can in that area. You can buy twice as many houses. So uh, you know you've really got to keep an eye on this. I think one of the main reasons is landlords feel comfortable in those areas. I think that's yeah, that's understandable, isn't it? Um, I think there's also a belief that uh, they will get better tenants. Now this is something that I can't go with. Uh, a better area does not necessarily equate to better tenants. If you buy a hundred thousand pound house and manage it badly or £300,000 house and manage it badly, you'll get equally bad tenant experience. If you buy the same house and manage it well, you'll get good experience. You can buy a house in the areas I'm gonna sort of point you towards and get perfectly good tenants that look after your house and pay the rent on time. And, and we've proved that over, over decades of doing this. Um, of course, buying the more expensive house, managing it badly is more risk, isn't it? Because um, you've got more to lose. But the starting point has got to be buy the right, buy, buy, buy these houses, but manage them right. Good, good, good management. Either way, um, you need to learn to manage the property as well. So, think of areas on a scale of, of, of one to ten. This is one of the sort of classic ways of it, describing it. One's the Bronx, and ten is is, is Manhattan. And you shouldn't be buying an area one or two because it's probably a little bit too rough. But you do want to be buying an area three or four, but you won't, won't be buying in a five or six. The, the yield just disappears. I mean, most people will know that they can't be buying a seven, eight or nine. I guess my point here is make sure you're calibrated correctly. Simple as that. If you want to make sure you can find these areas, you've already certainly got the right house. Now, in terms of this area, you need to calibrate. And if you're struggling, maybe go look around a little bit further down and a little bit low, low, lower down. So have, a, have some time and spend, spend some time thinking if your calibration's off. Um, so that's the right area. Um, we're on the right street. We're, we're, we're buying the right, sorry, that's the right house and we're buying on the right street, hopefully. But what about the area? What about the town or the city? That's what I'm saying. So it's true that, you know, you should look to buy a, a, a dual opera. Uh, maybe you're looking coming down a bit in, in, in the area, but what what about um, you know, the worst area in a town, or even the worst town um, in, in, in in sort of a citywide district? Is that a sensible thing? Uh, and this is where I think you do have to be careful. But we're also going to test the calibration. Um, if you buy the worst house in the street, you can go in there, you can do it up, and you'll be pretty sure that you'll get to a certain level. You cannot go into a whole area and do it up. So you do need to be careful with what I'm, I'm saying here. Do not buy in an area one or two. You know, if you see burnt out cars in the streets and antisocial behavior going on, that's not a place where you want to be investing. You want to come a bit away from that, but you can't go too far. So for sure, there's a bit of um, work to do here and you're probably not gonna get that straight from the video. Maybe the deal clinics are the kind of thing that will, will get that sorted out for us. There's definitely something in this thought. It's, um, it, it, it could be dangerous if you do it wrong, but there's definitely something in this. I often hear landlords overquoting very detailed statistics on reasons why they want to buy in an area, why they could, should. Um, they're looking, in short, for something gold-plated. That's what I'm hearing. I'm, I'm, they're looking for increased certainty, definitely and understandably. Um, however, and you can kind of imagine the kind of things that we're going into there, you know, employers and um, amenities and all these things. Uh, and in looking for that gold standard, I think landlords are making some quite fundamental mistakes because, um, f first of all, the numbers they're looking at probably aren't significant. I mean, in a statistically mathematical way, you know, latching onto that big gold-plated employer and maybe they do employ 2,000 people, but you're discounting the 
hundreds, thousands of little businesses that employ tens and tens and tens of thousands of people that you've never even heard of. Literally, that one big beacon of an employer just actually isn't significant at all. If it was significant, actually you might be even more concerned. There's more to win or lose if that employer goes up or down. Secondly, if you're paying for something extra, you're paying for that gold plated, whatever it is or whatever you think it is, and bear in mind, you know, one of the common psyches of a landlord is that you're looking for this, I think that it's a mistake, but maybe even the majority of landlords are looking for this, so they're overpaying, um, they're looking for this gold plated thing and there's more competition to buy those nice houses in the nice streets, so they're paying a premium for the, the gold plating. What happens when that area goes backwards? Because really it's the only way it can go. Um, the reality is if you buy a two or three bedroom family home in a relatively densely populated urban suburban area, it will have all the amenities you need. You know, no five year old ever woke up in the morning and said, I, I can't find a school to go to. Obviously the five year old wouldn't be doing that, it would be the parent, but you get my point. Um, you go out the front door of that house, there's a bus stop, no more than two minutes to walk away. They're just there, it's set up. The country is set up like that. You don't need to be thinking about that too much. Um, if you're buying a flat, paying a premium next to a train station because of that, almost if the train route disappears or that you're paying extra for something that really actually you don't need. Um, you know, there's all sorts of extra, you know, that, that flat's probably got a more transient person because maybe it wouldn't be the train route that um, disappeared. It would be the fact that the thing on the end of the train route wasn't as as, um, as as valuable anymore, you know, it's work in London, whatever. You can see these kind of things play now, you know, people buying flats at the, the, above a train station in Milton Keynes, I remember that. How many people there now lead to live there? Because they live in, in uh, work in London, less and less and less. Now they can go live in a, you know, in a village somewhere because, because of the situation, they can work from home, maybe. But people would have paid a premium for that. So I'm saying, if you get something very vanilla, very um, standard, you've got a lot less uh, risk in there because things can't come down, can they? You're there, you're in a house, it's, it's got things around it and we're not bright, relying on one big beacon that landlords tend to focus on and you don't need to, you want vanilla. Um, so, you, also you're probably getting less yield there as well, of course. Um, the news is actually even better because if, if you buy those sub 100,000 pound houses, in my experience, they tend to pop up in value um, quicker than, than anything else. You know, I, I, I bought, we still say it, it's still true, we've never bought a £50,000 house that hasn't doubled in value in, in five years. I believe it's because we're buying in these areas. You know, so maybe you're not looking for um, city centre stuff or that big um, beacon of a, of, of, a, of a city. You're looking for slightly, out, slightly further out. Still has uh, all the benefits of the big city. People might even walk, drive into the city or get the train or the tram into that city. So you've got all the benefits of it, but you're paying less, you're getting a high yield. And actually, I think the house prices, as things ripple out, might increase quicker. There's no guarantees, but I think definitely some less risk. Um, final thing on that is, it's the knowledge and the certainty that's the most important, isn't it? If you're, let's say all the numbers were slightly less, but if you're certain on them, and it's quite easy to get certain on a you know, 500, 600, 700 pound uh, a month rent on a terrace of houses where they're all the same. Only a, a small amount of research on Rightmove will tell you what they should rent out for. If you're unsure, you can do a, a trial advert even. You can pay for an advert and see how many phone calls you can get. So once you've got the certainty, then actually you've, well, you've got the certainty, but you, you, you should feel more comfortable about buying in those areas because it's the ratio between the numbers, isn't it? You know, the, the purchase price, the renovation, the end value and the rent. It isn't particularly what they are, it's the ratio between them. And the more certain you can get on them, then the better. So in summary, I want you to do three things. If you see a house with problems, move towards it, not away from it, and see if you can fix those problems cheaply, you know, less, Get, get a bigger discount than the, uh, um, than the cost of fixing them. Secondly, start to look at smaller houses in um, less, let's call it le less nice areas, which, you know, like I say, is where 60% of the UK lives. It's not, not, they shouldn't be less nice at all, really. Um, never, I would never buy a house that I would, you know, 
personally not be comfortable living in myself. Now, I might not aspire to live in there myself, but uh, I'd certainly, I wouldn't feel scared after dark, with you? Not ones and twos, but test yourself and test your calibration. So look for slightly smaller and cheaper house, that's point number two. And point number three, look for slightly less obvious areas and towns, you know, pick the big beacon and then go to a suburb or you know, another five miles out. So it's still got the benefit of that big town, but the prices should be significantly less. And then you're looking in these smaller areas and then you're looking for that particular house. And I think if you do that in that order, you might find slightly more properties. Uh, and of course, yeah, let, let's talk in less videos. Send me some, um, send me some deals that you're doing. Uh, we'll have a look, we'll, uh, we'll introduce the idea of a deal clinic. So hopefully that could be of, of use for some of you as well. That's it for now. Hopefully uh, speak to you all soon.